This meeting is being recorded. Okay, good afternoon or good morning and welcome to CFP Board's Virtual Diversity Career Fair. I'm Eddie Demirovich, Director of Talent Pipeline at CFP Board. And I want to thank each of you for joining us today. We have a terrific program lined up and uh, we really hope that you will come away with a lot of value networking and career opportunities that you can pursue. Um, we have 40 employers here today. It's really exciting. And they're hiring for all kinds of positions in financial planning and financial services. We have internships, entry level positions, all the way to more senior positions. So there is something here for everybody, as they say, no matter your experience level or what stage of your career you're in right now. So please check out our exhibit hall after this panel and meet with each of our 40 employers. Um, once you're in their boots, you can learn more about their company and what they do, what they do in financial planning specifically. You can talk with their team, you can chat with them either by video or by chat. They're here for you to help you find what you're looking for and they're eager to meet you. And uh, last but not the least, you can browse their open positions. As I said, there's a number of positions available for you to look at and even apply for those positions on the spot. Okay, so I'm honored to serve as the moderator for today's panel. I'm here with four amazing speakers who are representing four of the companies that are here with us today. The title of this panel is Employee Retention and Development finding an employer that values you. So we're going to talk about and do a deep dive into um, what our employers are doing to retain and develop their employees, how are they helping them grow so they can ultimately have a fulfilling career at their firm. And our goal here really is to empower you as a job seeker with guidance and information on how to find that perfect career fit with an employer that values you and will support your professional development. So we're going to cover a lot of useful information, including what you can do in your career search to find the right types of employers and careers that match with your skills and interests. We'll talk about different career pathways that our employers are offering and how employees at these companies can move along the career path progress along the career path, or even switch to a different career track altogether at the company. And we'll even give you some practical advice and ideas on how to find that perfect fit. So for example, how can you make your resume stand out or what questions to ask in the interview process? So lots of great content for you and I can't wait to dig in. Let me first start by introducing each of our speakers here with us today. Um, Louis Lambertus is Senior Vice President, Diversity and Inclusion Talent Acquisition Manager for the Legacy Global Banking and Markets, Merrill Lynch, and Private Bank Businesses in Bank of America. And in this ro uh, role, Louis is responsible for managing the firm's lateral sourcing strategy to maximize diversity hiring. We also have China Leonard. Uh, China is a manager at Vanguard's Financial Advisor Development Program, and she manages the recruiting, the hiring, and development of high-performing talent. Her role also allows her to oversee and support those employees who are working to obtain their Certified Financial Planner Certification, uh, and we love that, China. Um, Diana Chung is a wealth planning associate at Ballantine Partners, where she's helping families and entrepreneurs implement comprehensive financial plans so they can achieve their life goals. And um, what's interesting about Diana is that she is a bit of a career fair success story, because not too long ago, she was actually an attendee here, like many of you. So we're looking forward to learning more about her unique experience in her career journey. And then last uh, but not the least is uh, Christopher Thompson. He is the head of talent engagement for consumer and community banking at JP Morgan Chase. In this role, he leads a team focused on building career pathways and programs for employees while also helping connect employees to volunteerism and community engagement. So welcome to our panelists. 
And uh, let's get started. I'm going to ask each of you a few questions. Um, also for our audience, if you have questions of your own as we talk to our panelists, please type them into the Q&A box on the bottom of your screen. And we'll dedicate some time at the end of the panel for your questions. If for some reason we don't get to your question, each of our employers again is exhibiting today. So please stop by their booth and speak with their team there. All right, so the first question is for all of our panelists. And it is, can you please tell us briefly about your firm, where your positions are located? For example, are they in specific locations nationwide or are they virtual even? Um, and the types of positions that you're hiring for, are they entry level, more senior level, or is it a blend? And I'm going to start with you, Luz. All right, thank you so much, uh, first and foremost, for having me on the panel today. So excited uh, to come and talk a little bit about Bank of America with you all and excited to be on the panel with my panelists. Um, so Bank of America is a large global financial institution which engages on many levels in the financial services space from consumer banking to investment banking to sales and trading and, of course, wealth management. Our Merrill Lynch and private bank businesses, which are the businesses that are represented here today, are national businesses with markets across the country. So the good news is that it doesn't matter where you sit, there's likely a role where you are. And if you don't want to be where you are, there's likely a role where you want to go. So good there from a location perspective, lots of opportunity. Most of the roles posted today are open nationwide, so a lot of flexibility. As far as what types of roles they are, as mentioned earlier, the roles posted sit in our Merrill Lynch and private bank businesses, which are the wealth arm of the bank. Uh, Merrill is our high net worth arm focused on mostly focused on, excuse me, on financial advisory, while our private bank and ultra high net worth uh, clients are focused more on a mix of financial planning, estate planning, investment management. Most of the roles posted in the booth today are client focused. There are a few strategy and product roles posted there as well. Um, and we have a ton of development programs for entry level candidates to really make sure that we're setting you up for success as you finally get to build a book of business, as well as a healthy mix of roles for more experienced individuals. And I have to call out that some of the roles posted in the book today will require uh, FINRA licenses. That's great. Thank you, Louis. China, on to you and Vanguard. Yes, thank you. And so happy to join the other panelists. As Lutz did say, it's certainly a pleasure to be here. Uh, Vanguard is one of the top financial, financial, excuse me, companies and uh, listed as Forbes top best places to work. So very proud to be a part of Vanguard. Certainly value like our crew at diverse backgrounds. We manage over $7 trillion in assets and serve over 30 million clients all over the world. Ultimately, we thrive to foster change in communities around the world and make that real and lasting impact on uh, the lives of millions. We are well known for our unique structure where we are owned by our funds and ultimately that in turn is owned by our clients. So we're able to put them first, not have competing priorities and really make a value, um, valued relationship or long-term relationship with them. We do have 20 global offices within the US. We have four, which are in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Dallas, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, and our headquarters are in Malvern, Pennsylvania. Um, we are hiring within all four sites, which you would see featured in our, our booth today but consistently we're hiring for all types of positions which are featured on our websites. Uh, for today, we do have the Senior Certified Financial Planner Advisor role. We do have the Financial Advisor Development Program role, which is a 27 month accelerated program to obtaining your certified uh, financial planning designation and ultimately servicing uh, our clients in the high, net worth, high net worth advisor space. We do have a college to corporate internship, which is a 10 week paid internship. And then we have our I relaunch um, back to work positions, which are for those that have been out of the workforce for some time, whether it was for family obligations, military, 
and so forth. Thank you. Thank you, China. Great to see the breadth of positions you're offering at Vanguard. Um, Diana, on to you and Valentine Partners. Thanks, Ari, and thanks for having me. I'm equally as excited as my fellow panelists. So Valentine Partners is a fee-only RIA firm that offers comprehensive wealth management services. We help our client families run basically all aspects of their lives by providing integrated and objective advice. So that includes estate planning, investment management, tax planning, et cetera. We're comprised of two different practices. So on one side, we have the family office department where I serve our client families. And on the other, we have our high net worth department. So our clients fall into one of these categories depending on the complexity of their financial lives and the services that they may need. We're about 120 employees, so we're on the smaller side, but we're growing. Our headquarters are in Waltham, Massachusetts with other offices in Rochester and Wolfboro, New Hampshire and Palm Beach Gardens in Florida, which is my home office. We have a hybrid work model. So four days out of the week, we can work from home and Thursdays are in office. Our employees are more than welcome to go in more than once a week if they prefer. So we're currently hiring for three positions. There are entry level positions. We have the wealth planning associate role, which is what I'm currently doing. We have the investment analyst. So both of these are in the family office side. And then we have the wealth advisor associate in the high net worth side. Although we're not currently hiring for senior level roles, we do have openings crop up from time to time. So please do connect with us at the booth later today as we're always looking for talent. And of course, we welcome anyone to join us and chat with us later. That's terrific. Thank you, Diana. And uh, Chris, let us know about uh, JP Morgan Chase and your guys' positions. Super excited to join the party. Thank you, Eddie, and uh, to China, Diana, and Luz. Thank you so much for letting me share this space with you all. I, um, I tongue in cheek laugh to say, who doesn't know about JP Morgan Chase? But let me not be naive in thinking that everybody knows us. I don't, one of the things that we tout is that we're uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, financial services institution in the United States and across the world. About 280,000 people globally show up for our organization, helping to serve our clients and customers. For this particular conversation, the JP Morgan Wealth Management business is who I get the privilege of representing. I had a seat in that business just in my last role as the head of diversity, equity, and inclusion there. And one of the things that we talk a lot about is the diversification of our advisor population, truly helping us become a place that can represent all people at all levels. And when you think about what's open for us, we, we consider this idea that we have advisors who are in advisory capacity, who work in groups and are looking at higher net worth investment. That's a population we're looking to increase. We have a population in what is our US Wealth Management or CWM business, which is a branch-based advisor model that allows you to go into the home, have a conversation, build a relationship with your client and customer so that as you are checking with us and savings with us and 401k with us, you are investing with us too. That's our CWM business. And then we have a national branch model, which is really a call center model that is doing some amazing work, meeting our clients and customers more closely to where they are versus us always having to figure out, hey, come to us. No, we want us to be in a position where you can call us up, we can provide some advice and some planning to you. One of the most exciting things that we've been doing inside of that business the last couple of years, is something called our um, financial advisor development track. And it really is a way for us to think differently around an early career individual getting into the business now, right? I think several years ago, we were talking about this idea that most of the folks who were sitting in the advisor seat were over 50 years old and they represented a singular demographic. Well, our society and our world is transforming and changing. And I think about my 24 year old, my 22 year old and my 21 year old children and thinking now that they are learning about investment, can they have somebody who is sitting across from them providing them some advice and some planning from their seat? And so our advisor development track looks at a two year 
full-time program. There is a nine-week summer intern program, and then there are some very specific programmings from um, a six-week perspective with our Advancing Black Pathways Initiative, our Advancing Hispanic and Latino um, Initiative to ensure that there is a broader, more diversified population of advisors coming into our ecosystem. So as we grow as a firm, as the society continues to change, we have representation from those seats. In our booth, you're gonna find opportunities in each of those areas, and most specifically, FADT, we're pushing hard because we want that early career person in there. But if you are someone who is looking for a career, JP Morgan Chase, exciting to tell you from a call center perspective all the way to an executive level, we are hiring the best and brightest talent in the world. So thank you for letting me spend some time with you all today. And thank you, Chris. You know, hearing you all speak, I think it's kind of obvious that uh, this is a great time to be a job seeker in, in financial planning with so many opportunities available, especially for diverse next generation talent. Um, all right, our next question, finding the right job and career path can sometimes be challenging um, what are the career paths at your firm and how do you communicate them to candidates? And we're going to start with China on this one. That's a great question. It can be challenging, but it's all about just knowing like your passion and, and what your dreams are and your goals in life are. Um, at Vanguard, we have a variety of positions from entry level, client facing, to IT, to sales, to um, managers, to specialists, to analysts and ultimately an advisor, um, selfishly to say, but we communicate those via our website, vanguard.com forward slash jobs or through career fairs like this and career panels that we do. Um, we go out into the community, into colleges and do recruiting events and even educational uh, speaking events as well. And then also social media, so like LinkedIn, always communicating that way um, to let uh, any potential participants or candidates know what openings and events we have going on. That's great. Luz, I'm gonna ask you the same question. Yeah, so one of the things that's so great about the bank is that we're a very large and global organization. We have eight lines of business through which we serve our clients and communities. And even more importantly, we have a very strong culture of internal mobility at our firm. We actually even have a dedicated internal mobility team that is responsible for speaking with internal employees who are proactively or even passively seeking their next career move. So it's almost like we have a little bit of an internal search firm, right? We can go to our little internal agency and say, who do we got on deck? You know, who's ready to come on over? Um, so what does that mean in terms of career paths? What that means is that career growth here exists both vertically and horizontally, right? We've had individuals who come in and start in the consumer bank and then have gone on to our global technology team or our commercial banking team or sales and trading, even HR. We see it all the time. People come from the business into the HR space. We've also had people that start in our credit space and then go on to research or investment banking. And this happens at every level, right? At the junior levels, as well as the more senior levels. Actually, one of our most senior Latina MDs here at the corporate bank just went to our private bank to help them grow their diverse segments. So it really all starts with what you want to do. What is your passion? Where is it that you think you're gonna bring you know, to the table and add value? And then from there, we have the infrastructure and the resources and the support that you need to get you to where you wanna be. So um, as far as how we communicate this, uh, you know, obviously uh, things like this, right? We're at a lot of different career fairs. We host a lot of bespoke events with our diversity partners. We're finally back in person. So we're having, you know, I'm having a blast planning a whole bunch of in-person events here at the bank and finally connecting with people face to face. And they're loving it too. Um, that, that's been the resounding feedback. They're so happy to be back in real life with people. Um, and, you know, we always make sure to bring representatives from the business, right? It's really easy for us as HR professionals to, you know, tow the company line and tell you that the culture is great and that, you know, career paths are phenomenal, but it's even better when you hear it from somebody in the seat, right? And our um, businesses are so committed to making sure that they are represented at these events and that somebody, you know, can talk to them about what they can find as they come to work here. 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Luz in China. That's really good information. And, and speaking of career pathways in financial planning, for those of you in our audience who have not yet seen um, CFP Board's Guide to Careers in Financial Planning, uh, please check it out. It covers much of what uh, China and Louis just mentioned, everything from what financial planners do, why such a great career, typical career entry points and career tracks, uh, types of companies that are out there hiring for financial planning professionals, and how to find that right career for you that fits your skills and interests. Um, and actually to get the guide within the career fair today, uh, go to the resources tab, um, go to CFP board resources, and then download it from there. Um, so we touched on the mobility within the career path um, in the last question. Um, how are you providing mobility um, along the career path and across different career tracks at your companies? And I'm going to go with Chris on this question. Oh, I love the question. Thanks, Eddie. And, and two, I think an important point that even Lou's mentioned on, a, on an organization of our size. Um, I was fascinated when I joined the place, how many different things you could do. We, we joke that you could do just about anything, whether it is uh, procuring paintings for one of our larger buildings, down to being an advisor who is uh, client facing. I think the exciting thing for us is that we have it on the strategic priority page to ensure that the employees who work at J.P. Morgan Chase can see visibility beyond the seat that they're sitting in. I do think that the market that we're in today demands that we create visibility to opportunities more broadly. I think the other thing that, um, and I go back to my children again, I love telling the story of their journeys is that they look at a thing and they say, mm, let me try it, I don't like it, let me try something else. I remember for me, it was you try it and you keep trying it and you keep trying it and then maybe you go do something else. I do think the pivot that we're having to consider as organizations, as institutions, as firms who are dealing with people who are saying, wait a minute, I don't fully know what my career is. I know what I enjoy. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm competent about. And I wanna go work for a place where the people care about me, where the people can determine that, wait a minute, my voice matters here. And I get to bring all my skills to the conversation and table. And if I do enjoy it, I can grow in it. If I can't, then I go do something else. And for us, internal mobility, again, is a strategic priority from working with our program teams. One of the things I get the opportunity to lead is look across our portfolio and say, how are we providing very specific intentional career journeys for people to know at each level of their growth, am I getting what I need, whether it is around understanding how to navigate the firm or how to express what my brand is or how do I grow my presentation skills or even down to the place that says, hey, I've got to get a licensure. And how do we make sure we're coaching and developing you through our practice management organization to help you make sure you get the right kind of coaching as you are tracking through, especially within the wealth business, getting those varying um, licensures that you need. I think the other thing that I'd like to highlight about what we're doing really well is we have a team that is dedicated to helping redeploy our talent inside of the organization. So view a very clear picture on where people sit, how they are growing and developing, and when it's time for them to move, we have visibility to them to help them make that pivot to that next place. I think it's exciting where we are. I think we are evolving in a way that will meet the need of anybody who shows up in our portfolio. What I want to say is we're not perfect. We are still working through some of the bells and whistles and bugs that happen. But if you enter our institution, there's a dedicated focus on making sure that you have a voice in how your career is going to move. And then we partner with you to make sure that that can happen in a successful way. Yeah, thank you, Chris. That's that's really important. And as our own research at CFP Board shows, having those clearly defined and communicated pathways uh, is so important for both the employers and the employers. Um, Diana, same question to you. Uh, to you. Um, how are you providing mobility along the career path and within different career tracks at, at Ballantyne? Yeah, great question. So, Valentine is very transparent and has a defined career path for all roles at the company. We have this leadership pipeline guide that breaks down what each role entails and what is expected of you at a certain level. 
So with this, you can gauge where you're at, what you need to keep working on to get that promotion. We offer firm-wide training, both from internal and external sources, and many education opportunities to keep learning and improving ourselves. Valentine also provides support for the Series 65 and CFP certification. So we'll pay for courses, the exam, pay time off to study and to take the exam. Um, in terms of going across different career tracks, I wanna emphasize that Valentine also provides a lot of flexibility and opportunities for you to grow in different directions. For example, one of my fellow colleagues, Akiva, whom some of you may know, started as a WPA, which is the role that I'm in, and she carved out a new role for herself as our financial education specialist. So shout out to Akiva for all the important work she's doing. Um, I also have another colleague who started as a WPA, and now she's our chief of staff, and another wealth planning associate who switched to the investment track. So Everything is possible here where there is an intersection of interest and need at the firm. You can always raise your hand and ask. Our management team is always willing to work with us and make sure that as we grow with the firm, we still feel fulfilled within our roles. Thank you, Diana. Completely agree about uh, the important role of management in that whole process. Um, I'm gonna stay with you on my, on my next question here. Um, you know, I mentioned you are a career fair success story. You attended our career fair a couple of years ago um, as a job seeker. And now you're part of this terrific team at Valentine Partners with Akiva and everybody else. Um, tell us a bit about that journey. How did you end up at Valentine Partners? And uh, what do you see as your future growth and development, um, meaning your own career path at the firm? Yeah, so I am indeed a success story. Um, so two years ago, I had the pleasure of attending this exact CFP career fair and somehow managed to land an interview and then a job at Valentine. So up until this point, I had been networking with a lot of different individuals from different firms to get a feel for the industry and see what type of company I'd like to work at. I felt so behind because I had zero experience in this industry. For context, I graduated in 2018 with a bachelor's in psychology and biology, which were completely unrelated. And this was 2020 when I was studying for my graduate degree in finance. I learned about the difference between big firehouse firms versus RIAs, the different types of compensation structures, all that kind of stuff. So after a lot of these conversations, I realized that I was looking for a place where I can really learn the basics of comprehensive financial planning and build my foundation there. I didn't think I'd be able to succeed if I had to hit the ground running trying to find clients when I couldn't even explain the basics. And throughout many of the conversations that I had with advisors, they would say when they were younger, um, they couldn't really land clients because they looked too young and nobody with a million dollars would trust you. <laughs> so, so that's what kind of led me towards Valentine. Um, aside from the fact that they were hiring entry-level roles, what won me over was how nice everyone I spoke to was and reading about their initiatives in their annual impact report. I felt a lot of their values resonated with me. And when I looked at their website, I noticed a lot of women in leadership positions. I thought, wow, this is a place where I could really see myself at. So a few days after attending the spare, I wrote a cover letter and applied for the job. Um, so the interview process was quite lengthy, um, and it was right in the middle of my final, so it was very stressful. I had an initial phone screen with HR, then interviews with six senior advisors who are also partners, and a final interview with more junior associates. So this was very scary, <laughs> but I vividly remember during an interview with two of the partners I had shared how nerve wracking this whole experience was because I was talking to such senior people at the company and one of them said, it's okay, just breathe. Um, we're here to have a conversation and to get to know you, so don't be nervous. And he even showed me that he had a sticky note on his desk to remind himself to breathe. So it was reassuring that even people at 
you know, all stages within their careers get nervous and so humbling that he admitted that. So the fact that these senior advisors took so much time out of their days to personally interview all the candidates, um, that showed me how much they cared and how accessible they would be to me when I joined the firm. As for my future, I hope to complete my CFP courses and take the exam next year and work my way up. I feel like Valentine always provides us the opportunity to grow and try different things. I mean, how cool is it that I get to speak at a panel when I'm barely two years into the industry? So I'm very honored that Valentine gave me this opportunity to share my journey here today. And really, I'd say my path is just to keep learning new things every day and to take on new opportunities as they arise. Well, thank you, Diana. Such a great story. Uh, again, great to see you here. <laughs> You're all about your progress since that career fair a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. And that's a nice segue into sort of the practical application of what we're talking about here. So how can job seekers be intentional in their career search to find an employer that will invest in their development as a financial planning professional? So specifically, what are some of the questions they can ask during the interview process to make sure they can see a long-term fit? And I'm going to go back to uh, you, Luz, on, on this question. Sure. So um, that's a phenomenal story, though, before I answer the question. Uh, Diana, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, you know, we don't realize how powerful moments like right now, just you telling your story uh, can be. Um, people that are watching this panel can see themselves reflected in you. Um, and more importantly, you shared some really great tips about what we're going to dive into, which is, you know, things that you noticed in the interview process. You know, there had a lot of females in leadership positions, senior advisors taking time out to speak with you, and then also to say, hey, we all get nervous. Don't worry about it. Calm down. And clearly, you did a phenomenal job because you're there now. And, and uh, so thank you so much for, for sharing that experience. Um, but I will say, you know, it might sound a little bit odd, but I think it's important to remember that this is a two-way interview, right? Just as much as they are interviewing you as a candidate, you are interviewing them as a potential employer because ultimately you want to be somewhere that you know you're going to find the resources and the support that you need to be successful and grow in your own career, right? It's not just what you're bringing to the firm. What can they give you in return? And so, you know, with that in mind, you want to ask questions about development programs, career trajectories, right? We talked about that earlier. What does the career trajectory look like for this role? You want to know what a successful path looks like in this field and in the company at large, right? Um, you know, JP, Bank of America, we're very large organizations. The opportunities are plentiful. Um, so, you know, what do you need to be successful in this role, in the company in general? And then, you know, those are going to be the things that are going to be important to you once you start working anywhere. Definitely ask your manager about their management style, their expectations of the person that's going to be sitting in the seat, right? Their expectations of the team um, and how they envision the team and, and the company moving forward. That'll give you a little bit of a sense of what you can find when you join. It'll give you a picture of, of how you're going to feel when you're a part of that team. Um, and where you're going to be able to go with that team and with the company. Yeah, thank you, Luz. Those are great points. Um, Shaina, same question for you from the Vanguard perspective. Yeah, thank you for that. And as Lex, Lux pointed out, like it's very important to know like that career path, that journey um, that that company will take you on and what supportive measures and resources are in place in order to develop you and foster your growth. Um, I do think it's also important to think about like the company, like overall and ask the question, like what is that company culture like? It's one of like my whys and what has kept me here. I've been at the company for 14 years and I will say like that culture, that family, that collaborative, that team environment that we do so well is very attractive and it's just very hard to let go of because of those meaningful relationships that I was able to make along the way and just continue to make. Um, the other thing I would just think about is um, asking about um, things that are important to you, one, but also about the, um, just the retention, like what measures of retention do companies like have in place? Um, how do they 
um, allow and foster for your voice to be heard. So Chris mentioned earlier, like it's important to feel valued and know that your voice is going to be heard. So asking about that and what does that look like for a company? Um, so very, very important. Like we pulse our crew consistently to get that voice and that input, input and create like action plans to move that, um, that idea or that feedback or a suggestion forward and see it day to day. I see it. And again, one of the things that I absolutely enjoy um, having a career in. Um, and then the last thing I would just say is asking about like the team that you're in, like what is that team dynamic? What's the mood of that team? So it's great to know like who you're gonna be coming into, who you're going to partner with to drive success within uh, your team, the department and ultimately the organization. Yeah, thank you, China. Those are great points. Um, I'm going to again point our audience to uh, CFP Board's career guide for additional specific questions uh, to consider during the interview process, whether it's about the type of work you'd be doing at that company as a financial planning professional, uh, the company culture, both of you guys touched on that already, um, even compensation structure, what does that look like? Is it salary based or commission based or hybrid? Um, and what does the company offer to you as an employee in terms of professional development and perhaps financing your coursework towards things like CFP certification? Um, okay, next question, building upon all of this, um, what would be your advice to um, job seekers in financial planning to make their resumes stand out? And I'm going to go back to you, Diana, because I think you are the most recent job seekers in this group. Yeah, so before you enter the profession or any profession really, take some time to do some introspection and think about what kind of career path would fit your personality. Research where you wanna be long-term in your career by talking to people um, in different career trajectories. And once you have an idea, I would recommend applying to relevant internships and immersing yourself uh, to learn more about the industry. So you can read newsletters, listen to podcasts, maybe do an FBA externship, especially if you don't have much experience. And when it comes to your resume, you should highlight relevant education, experience, and interests. So you can talk about the newsletters or the podcasts that you've listened to. Um, I think for companies that do offer cover letters, this is a great way to distinguish yourself, especially if you don't have um, experience in the industry. And during the interview, very important to talk about interpersonal skills, problem solving and collaboration skills. Because even if you don't have direct experience, all these things count since we work with people every single day, whether it's with our colleagues as a team or our clients. And I think most importantly, being able to explain why you are choosing us instead of other firms that you can go to. Thank you, Diana. Um, same question for you, Chris, about making your resume stand out. Yeah, I think um, one of the, I've, I've had this really fortunate career where I spent about 25 years in executive search uh, recruitment and I started my career in college recruitment. So I've looked at resumes for almost 30 years. I know I don't look it, but to the, to the point, but by the way, I got to do it too. Diana, man, you are such a breath of fresh air, like listening to you talk about your experience and the journey you've taken. Um, you, the, your um, story gets me excited about um, the work that we're doing and why this is so important. Um, when I think about someone and how you enhance your resume, it starts before you put your resume together. I think you've got to make sure you understand and know what your story is that you're telling yourself around your skills, around your competencies, around your experiences. And then you put that in a paper form with words that give someone else permission to tap into who you are without really knowing who you are. Basic things on a resume. One, numbers stick out. So anytime you can put a number where there is a word, it sticks out. I know some people from a formatting perspective don't like to bold and highlight, but every once in a while, a strategically placed bold or highlight or italicized thing creates it where it takes 
the reader to a place you want them to go. I think when you start considering this idea that in today's world, one of the things that we don't talk a lot about um, as much as this thing called the soft skills, which are actually more hard skills than anything else. We were just talking about um, this idea of culture. Well, when you start thinking about the kind of place you wanna spend most of your time, um, depending on where you work, that's about eight hours plus. Um, so you wanna go to a place where you have connection, where the individuals and people that you interact with every single day, you're feeling them. Like you're feeling like you've got some relationship. I talk about it in terms of creating human connection, that human connection allows you to see what the community looks like and the community that you sit in allows you to now have a culture that you all form together. It is one thing for me to say that JP Morgan Chase has an amazing culture, but inside of that statement are tentacles that go from Mumbai to San Antonio, Texas, from business banking into the investment bank, each individual ecosystem has its own culture that's created. And that's created because of the community of people who work together and that is enhanced because they've made some connection on a human level with one another. So when you start thinking about this new way of introducing yourself through your resume to places like JP Morgan Chase, yes, I wanna see what you've done. Yes, I wanna see you where you've worked. Yes, I wanna know how long you've worked there. Yes, I wanna know, are you involved in volunteerism or any associations outside. Yes, I wanna know your degree. Yes, I wanna know the things around the idea that you are a human, not just a piece of paper. So make sure that the words that you use give ideas that the softer skills, the big one right now is empathy. How do you write empathy onto your resume? It's the words that you can use. Things that in your, the top summary, compassion, empathetic leadership, human connection, especially in our business, the ability to relate to an external customer because most of our roles are client facing. What, how do you build relationships? Can you show me in a written form the way that you've been able to do that successfully? No matter where you worked, it is that ability to create a connection with someone in a written form so that someone says, I want to know more about what I'm reading and who I'm reading about. And then it gives you the opportunity when you get in front of them to shine to the point that everybody wants to be together now we have so many offsites, like where people were, were away, and everybody's coming together. So we're recreating a human experience. And yet we still have virtual interviews that we're doing as well. So the other enhancement is knowing how to tell your story when you're in front of someone in a video form and back to this human exchange where eye contact is still important, where the ability to know that um, the person across from you isn't any better um, any more competent, any, any more skilled than what you are. It is, as Lou said, there's this, this exchange that you're having that, that, that they're looking to find out how we're going to connect and you are looking to find out how we're going to connect. So the journey you're going to take professionally together is one where there's a reward for the organization and for you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, and, and also to you, Diana, that is so helpful. Um, I would mention another resource at CFP board that is available to our career center. This is our year round job board for financial planning positions. Uh, we also offer a free resume review as part of our career center. So if you sign up as a job seeker, uh, fill out a profile, you'll get that opportunity to get your resume graded and uh, evaluated for everything we just talked about today. Um, so check out more on cfp.net slash careers, or just email us through the career fair, and we'll help you find that. Um, next question is for all of our panelists, just to kind of round out everything we talked about today. What do you and your colleagues say to job candidates when they ask you about the culture at your company? And what is the culture of retaining employees at your firm? I'm going to go back to you, Luz. Uh, I have to say, I am both the best and the worst person to ask this question of, because if you couldn't tell, I totally drank the Bank of America Kool-Aid. Um, in all seriousness, I can honestly say that we have a great culture of diversity and inclusion here at the bank, and we've had it for a long time. This is not a fad for us. 
We didn't sign on in 2020 like many people did. This has been a movement that spanned two plus decades now in our organization. So I can say we're very, very far along in our DEI journey just to ensure that there's resources and infrastructure to support not just the acquisition of talent, but development and growth of these individuals once they're here. So it really starts with meeting the talent where they are, right, whether that be on campus and, you know, that can break down into HBCUs, HSIs, underrepresented minority development programs, member organizations, right, and that continues through our many development programs internally through support and internal mobility, like I mentioned before. We have programs specifically aligned for mentorship and sponsorship so that you can have advocates for you as you're growing in your journey. Um, and we also have amazing employee networks internally that are very active in creating a sense of community for our teammates and aligning our teammates to causes that they feel very passionate about. Um, I led the New York chapter of the Hispanic Employee Network here, OLA, for three years, and I have to be honest and say it's some of the most fulfilling work that I've done here at this company. So we also have great benefits that allow you to ensure you're taking care of yourself and taking care of your loved ones, and we have a ton of focus on mental wellness. We know just how important that's been, you know, in the in the last few years in particular. Um, and we're really intentional about everything that we do here at the bank, including making sure that we're a great place to work. Thank you, Luz. Uh, Chris, back to you on the same question. Yeah, you're, you're probably going to hear some very similar things, um, because as a large institution, the one critical thing we have to do well is make this big place feel small. And I talk about it through the complexity of how do you take an individual person and scale the experience for them? It's impossible to do, right? But it's still our responsibility to do as best we can to, to the point, meet you where you are. From our core diversity, global diversity, equity, and inclusion platform where David Myrie is the leader, there are seven centers of excellence who are strategically aligning with four, seven core groups inside of our ecosystem to make sure we're meeting the needs of that community. We have BRGs, some places may call them ERGs, some may call them old school affinity groups, but they exist for the express purpose of making sure the authentic way that you want to show up so that your culture can show up, so that your personality can show up, so how you choose to identify that when you show up at our place, your voice is heard and you are accepted. We've had significant investment in this particular space year over year. And there are very few, as my light goes out, there are very few places who are thinking about our employee at the level that we are now thinking about that employee, not just at the top of the house from a development programs perspective, from an executive sponsorship perspective, from a mentorship perspective, but going down into the organization and saying, how do we meet you and the needs that you may specifically have around how you want to grow at our place. I think we've talked about that as a part of this discussion around like retention and mobility and how do you, when you show up at JP Morgan Chase, can you continue to see yourself moving and growing in a place like ours? Um, I am excited because under those centers of excellence, the work that they are doing today, it really is a external and an internal way of thinking about someone who's wanting to come to us we're not gonna forget about you once you come in, but we have programs and plans for you when you get here. And then our $30 billion racial equity commitment to really help close the racial gap has been a key driver to help us meet the community in a way that we never have before. We have community managers who are sitting in some of our key cities in the United States of America, making sure that we're going to community centers, we're going to churches, we're, again, we're meeting that individual where you are to make sure that you have the education and awareness that's necessary so you can be banked, so you can be in a position where if you want a career in financial services, we're a place for you to come. If you need help understanding how your finances work, we're a place that you can come. So it is that closing the gap on understanding we're not just a big bank that doesn't care about you, but we're a bank that's filled with human beings who are just like you, who are working to meet the needs every single day of our clients and customers. And the truth is our internal employee is our client. They are our customer. And when we meet them well, then we have great outcomes on the back end. That's great, Chris. Thank you. China, on to you and to what Vanguard is doing. 
Yes, thank you for that. And as Chris stated, there definitely are similarities. I do want to start with um, mental health awareness. Um, I think that's so important, especially in the time in the environment that we have come out of and still kind of still in. Vanguard offers just several resources uh, in respect to that. And then overall health, think about like health fitness. We actually have gems like with on, on site um, as well as medical centers uh, through all, throughout all of our campuses. So that's so phenomenal to when you think about a company who cares about everything as it pertains to yourself. Um, the culture is one that you are going to hear about very often. Probably anybody that you speak to at Vanguard is going to be part of their why. It's certainly a part of mine. Uh, Vanguard is committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's just something that's embedded and rooted within our culture. Um, another thing uh, that we mentioned before is just that importance of feeling value and having your voice heard. So it's such a large organization, but just in an intimate setting. I mean, no matter where you are, what position that you are in or who you are networking with, you just always feel on that peer-to-peer -peer level where you're supported, cared for, um, you have that partnership continuously throughout the culture here at Vanguard. Another thing I wanna mention is our three C's. Um, it's for our crew, our clients, our community. Um, that's guided by um, just doing the right thing. We wanna make sure that we do the right thing for everyone who we work with and come across. And uh, another thing that was mentioned was um, just different groups that are offered that supports diversity. Ours is called our crew resource group, so CRGs. Uh, Lux mentioned Ola, and I was like, wait, do you work at Vanguard? <laughs> um, our um, uh, Hispanic group is by the same name. We also have a WILS, which is Women's uh, Initiative for Leadership Success, where it's not just geared to women, but we have our um, men supporting us in that initiative as well, which is so refreshing to see. So you can see like just that close knit um, friendship and family environment that's fostered in, in all that we do. So great culture. Um, one of the things you mentioned, uh, Eddie, was just how, how is that culture of retention? So it's continuously creating that open and trusting environment. We do that by uh, leaders will meet with their crew twice a month, if not more. There's consistently multiple like team gatherings uh, throughout the week. And then also those senior manager discussions. So it's not hard to reach up um, within the organization. That's gonna be something that's proactively done anyway, outside of anything that you would want to initiate, initiate on your own. Um, so all those are great things. I also wanna, I can't help, <laughs> But to mention like the benefits, um, especially when it comes to continuous learning. So you think about coming into the organization here at Vanguard, having to get licensing, having to obtain your CFP, uh, that study time, those licensing, those certifications are all sp sponsored by Vanguard, even CF CFAs and so forth. We do offer tuition reimbursement for any higher education, like graduates degrees, and also student uh, loan repayment plans for those who have graduated within the last five years. So all great things. Great question. Thank you. Those are great things indeed. Thank you, China. Uh, same question for you, Diana, and what you guys are, you know, the culture of Valentine partners. Yeah, so the first thing I tell everyone is my colleagues are the nicest people. Everyone is so incredibly supportive and caring of each other. So as a new employee, we're assigned a mentor. And I cannot tell you the amount of times I've come to him with every sort of question. I probably repeated myself so many times and he was just very patient in teaching me the ropes and just, you know, learning to get my groove on a Valentine. So I would say we're a very employee centric firm. We put um, our colleagues first and something I love about Valentine is that they really value us as individuals and often ask us for feedback and incorporate said feedback into any decision that they make. You know, our leaders are very transparent with 
the reason behind important decisions and clearly communicate company goals um, on a quarterly basis. Um, our culture is very big on trust and respect. Uh, so we're usually working in teams of like four to five people. And we actually get a lot of, um, we, we're not always being like micromanaged. Like we get a lot of time on our own to do stuff. And then there's just that trust that we're doing everything we can. And whenever we do need help, we can always reach out. You know, we have a very flat corporate structure and we're actually encouraged to speak to others and form mentorships, even if we don't work directly with these people. And so um, in terms of benefits, I'd say we also have a lot of great benefits. We have a wellness stipend. So we receive a stipend for the gym, um, at least in the Florida office. We have resources for mental health and also continuous licensing. So as I mentioned, we pay for the CU65 um, CFP and also CFA if you're on the investment track. Um, we also get the chances to attend conferences and be a part of different financial planning associations. So I would say uh, similar to my other panelists here, like there's a lot that our company offer and yeah, I would, everyone's just great at Valentine. Well, thank you, Diana. I'm going to go back to uh the research that CFP board has done on this topic of, of culture and multiple studies we've done have shown us that it is so important to retaining talent. And I want to applaud what all of your firms are doing, whether it's mentorship programs, employee resource groups, financing CFP certification to really create that environment that is welcoming for folks to stay there and thrive in their careers. Um, so that just about is all of the questions we have for our panelists. Let's go to a few questions that our audience has asked in the meantime and take a few minutes to answer those. Uh, the first one is for you, Diana. Is the, uh, Parveen is asking, is the associate wealth planner role remote or on site? So it's both. We go into the office once a week on Thursdays and the rest of the week you can work from home. Um, if you're open to moving, then we have offices in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. New, um, in New Hampshire, we have offices in Rochester and Wolfboro, and in Massachusetts, in Waltham. So I actually live in Miami, and I commute to Palm Beach Gardens every Thursday. And so far, for me, like I'm fine with that during my commute, which is about an hour and a half each way I just listen to audiobooks so it's it's doable for me so I think it really depends on what your preference is but it's remote and on-site okay great uh, we have a question from Vincent uh, in terms of opportunities uh, do Van does Vanguard offer internships and part-time jobs that's a great Sorry. question yeah Part-time jobs are very rare, um, just depends on like the department um, that you are, role that you are going for. Um, the internship, yes, college to corporate internship um, is every summer uh, for 10 weeks. And again, it is a paid internship that we do offer through a, a variety of, of um, programs. Okay, great. We have a question. Um, what advice do you have for mature job seekers who are changing careers? We typically have financial obligations and cannot afford to do an internship. Louis, is this something you can tackle? I also have something to add. Um, so a lot of companies now are offering what we call returnships right, for individuals who have taken a career break. I believe China alluded to, to Vanguard's program earlier when she was talking about the types of roles that they have opened and, and posted in the booth. Um, we do have returnship programs here at the bank for several different lines of business. Um, the private bank and Merrill do not have a returnship campaign yet, but that is in the works. Um, it's on my desk, <laughs> so we're working through that, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but we do have returnship opportunities in our business bank, in our commercial bank, 
and uh, our corporate functions as well as our enterprise credit team currently. So I, I encourage you to look at the career site and apply for those programs. And those are paid programs, which are consulting to hire. That's, that's wonderful. I would add to that, that CFP Board Center for Financial Planning in partnership with our donors and funders currently offers 16 different scholarships that help finance the financial planning education required for CFP certification. Um, and many of these are offered at what we call the certificate level or adult learning level for folks who are looking to switch careers into financial planning. So check out cfp.net slash scholarships for opportunities there or contact us through the career fair or the career center for more information on those. Um, all right, with, with that, uh, we're just about out of time. I want to again, thank our wonderful panelists and each of you in our audience. I hope you found this helpful and informative um, as you take those next steps in your career or even as you meet with our employers today. Um, again, please visit us in the exhibit hall, check out all of the exhibits there to learn more about the careers at all of the wonderful companies that are here with us today. Um, I hope you can make meaningful connections today and best of luck in your career journey. Thank you. You at the booth, guys. Thank you. Yeah.